Well, yeah, uh, my name is Malcolm. I was um, uh, born in Halifax in uh, 1963, and um, many amazing, wonderful things happened. I was only two weeks old when my parents took me to the Church of England, and I was christened as a baby, two weeks old. And, and as I grew up, uh, God, um, I felt I always believed in God, even as a child. I was at the Boys Brigade, and we was at the Methodist Church where uh, we were singing as kids, and there was an amazing song uh, which, which they sang, and I started singing it for the first time, even though I found church boring, and, and vicars droning on like bagpipes. <laughs> I still sang the song, and it was, Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Be forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battles, as you are by my side. I will not wander from the pathway, because you are my guide. Well, in my life, I was bullied terribly from them days at age seven and eight. And going up, uh, I ended up, there's an old saying, it says, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> so I couldn't beat the gangs. It was a very rough area where we lived. Uh, for very poor people. There were a lot of burglars, a lot of thieving, a lot of fighting. And sadly, I was one of the victims then, but then I joined the gang. I thought, if you can't beat them, join them. So I joined the gangs. And, and I ended up being a very bad man. But often, even though I did many bad things, I often prayed still to God, because I knew God was with me. And I felt sorry for a lot of people as well, and wanted to be friends with people rather than be bullying them, then fighting with us. And, and God was always with me. How many times have we always said, when we've hit rock bottom, oh God help me. I think we've all done it, haven't we? Naturally. Uh, We've all got that kind of faith within us. <coughs> oh God help me. And um, this is what my life was like, even though I was doing very bad things. When I got to the age of 11, I decided I, I'd had enough of uh, the Boys Brigade because I was beaten up for going to the church, I was beaten up for going to the Boys Brigade. And I decided the best thing for me to do is start smoking so they'll all think I'm older and stop bullying me. <laughs> So that's what I did. I started smoking and I started drinking. And at the school, the secondary school, they gave me a Gideon's Bible book, but I never read it. Oh boy, I wished I had read that. It would have helped me so many times, because as I got older and I read it, I started teaching my own children what they needed to know when they were bullied. Forgive those who persecute you. You think, wow, look at this. And so um, I remember when my daughter, she came in, she'd been bullied at school so bad. And I said, just invite that girl that's bullying you to our house. Tell her she can come for tea. And we'll cook her a meal. And when she invited her, she didn't want to. Uh, but she said, well, my dad says, you're very welcome to come to our house for a drink. She stopped bullying her. And she started being good friends. It's quite interesting when you befriend your enemies, isn't it? The change. So. That was just in them early days. But anyway, later on, uh, I was um, uh, very depressed when we got married, when we had children. Uh, I was often suffering from, because of all the bad things I'd done, I felt quite guilty. And I hated myself for all the things that I'd done. I got into, I got into we borrowed lots of money, because we had no money, we had to borrow it to buy furniture and things in the house. And I got very depressed. And one day, I was made redundant at the mill where we worked, and I couldn't get a job. This was in the 1980s. And I couldn't get a job, and I thought, oh no, what am I going to do? And I ended up uh, borrowing more money just to pay the debts. And I ended up lying. I ended up stealing. I ended up doing whatever I could to get money. And, and I hated myself. And then one day, I just felt my ex-wife, she needed a better husband. And I felt my children needed a better dad. Mm -hmm. And I decided to end my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I left them thinking they could have a better life without me. 
and uh, I went off into the woods. I left a note. And as I was walking through the woods, I was in my mind saying goodbye to everybody. And it was, it was a very depressive time, but for the first time in my life, I started to feel a bit better because I knew I was going to go to heaven. But then I had this overwhelming sense that I was falling down a black hole forever. And I said, oh God, help me, I don't want to go there. I want to go to heaven, I've had enough of this world, I hate it. And I hate what I've done. And I just, uh, and that was it. And then all of a sudden, there was like a wave hit me. And it was an amazing love that touched me. And I was completely broken in tears. I cried and cried and cried. And then it was like all the hurts and pains from the abuses I've had in my life were coming out in tears. Floods of tears. And then another wave of love hit me. And it was like all the authorities of our country, like the Queen and all authorities, looking, that's how it felt, all of them loving me so much more and telling me to live. And I just fell on my knees crying even more. And when I got up, another wave of blood hit me and it was like all the world loving me and my heart felt like it was going to burst. And I went, oh. And I, I was on my knees and I said, God, what can I do? I don't, I, 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 I'll go, I need some help. I hate who I am. I hated myself so much. I had to get to that point where I just wanted a better life. And I said, help me, help me to get all my debts paid. Help me to do this, help me to do that. Help me to be a better man. And all of a sudden, I just felt, <laughs> right, I'm not gonna kill myself for the first time. And I ran back to get the, the note that I'd left to say goodbye to everybody. And when I got there, my ex-wife turned up. And she said, an angel spoke to her saying, it's come to you. We've had the value of the house. And it's three times more than it was two years ago when we bought it from the council. And all my debts was at the same level as what the house was now valued at. We sold the house. We paid up all the debts and we started again, a new life. It was wonderful. We had two kids at that time, but then we had four. And uh, three years later, after all of that had happened, I'd always say I'd been a pub landlord and everything else, many things happened, but then one day, um, I was a bit guilty because I had started doing bad things with him. Just living without being in church, without reading the Bible, without anything. But then I often still said, oh God help me, thank you for what you did in them woods. But often, I was often thinking worse. I had started drinking heavy, I was an alcoholic, I was, drink I was smoking. Every time I tried to stop smoking, I ended up smoking more when I started again. And so I was on 60 cigarettes a day. I was coughing every morning, and, and then one day, a vicar knocked on my door. And I, and I went, oh, and he said, he said, we'd like to invite you to our church. And I said, oh no, I said, yeah. when I was a kid, I found your church is boring, and you vicars going in on like bagpipes. Well, he laughed. He said, come on, it's a lot more modern than that. So I said, all right then. And my daughter, she was aged about seven, and she'd started going to this church from her school friends. And um, so I went. Well, when I walked through the door, I could feel that love again, and that wonderful peace I felt in them woods. I thought, wow, this is gone. Everybody, they had a band and they were playing. Everybody was dancing and laughing. There was so much people <coughs> smiling and loving me. I felt so much nicer. So I went to the pub afterwards and said, right guys, come on, you all need to come to church. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a lot better than this pub. Come on. <laughs> and they said, no, no, no. And they were so upset with what I said. I said, all right, then I won't bother going again. I'll just stay with you guys. You see, I lived trying to help people and I always submitted to them more. That's why I ended up doing so many evil and bad things, trying to befriend people. But then, 
they start up meeting at my, at my house and they start talking to me about Jesus. Now at school we've learnt about Jesus and every time we mention Jesus I just thought about that baby at, at Christmas time when we're doing all these things and plays. So I always thought of a baby. But then they start telling me what Jesus has actually done. Jesus, um, when you when you read, they started reading the beginning where man, when he sinned, he was separated from God. Even though I used to, I, I could sense that. But when I sung that song, for oh Jesus, I had promised to serve me to the end. I, now I'm older. I can see God actually stood by that. Mm. Even though I was doing bad things, He stayed with me in those battles. Mm -hmm. And He helped me all the way through. Mm. And there's, there's many words there that God uses mm. for us. And I thought, wow, this is powerful. Mm. So Jesus came to connect us all back to God again. So we were no longer separated from God. And I just said, oh, I'm so sorry for all that I've done that separated me from God. But then he told me that Jesus died and cleansed you from all your sins so that you can be connected with God again. Well, I thought, well, the very least I can do for him because he died for me is I can die for him. And I'm ready, because I, 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 I still didn't feel like living. And so I started living a new life. They told me that Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, but he's not forcing himself upon you. It's up to you to open your heart to him. And that's exactly what I did. I said, God, I give my life to you. You're welcome to come into my life, come into my heart. Because I remembered all the time what happened in them woods when he touched me, when I said, oh God, help me. He helped me. It's quite very powerful. And so I was very moved by it all. And I thought, well, the best thing I can do is just be a disciple for Jesus. And so I started learning many things. One of my friends came to my house in, the, in, the, in them early days. And, it, and I started telling him what had happened. And he said, okay, I'm absolutely amazed at what you're saying. He said, normally when you're talking, you always swear. I said, I said, oh, I went, oh of course, I've stopped swearing. Wow, look at that. Uh, I said, I never realised that. Because I used to swear at an F word in every other word. Uh, just naturally. And he was amazed. And then the next thing that happened, uh, we went to the church again. And they started talking about, do you understand Imagine in this room now, a gunman comes in with a gun and says you all have to die because of what you've done. But if one of you volunteers, I will let the rest of them go. Well, I put my hand up. I went, yeah, me. I don't mind volunteering for that. I would have done that because I don't deserve to live, but you lot do. And, and the vicar said, thank you, Marco. And the one or two others did that put their hands up as well and said thank you now what do you send your son well oh my heart just broke naturally thinking, no way no way would i send my son and he said god so loved the world that he gave his only son and i thought how much that must have broken god's heart and how much it must have broken his heart because it broke mine just thinking about it but then he rose him from the dead. And I thought, wow, what a relief. And isn't that wonderful? And then I got home and I said, yeah. I, and every day I was just giving my life to Jesus again. All, every day. I got rid of so much rubbish and all the horrible horror movies and the horrible books that I had in the house. I burnt them all in the garden. I even shook the TV out because there were things on the TV that I didn't like watching. So I stopped watching TV. Anyway. Then a man knocked on my door and he said, Malcolm, um, I need some drugs because I used to sell them cannabis just as a favour. And then what happened was I told him, I've, I've become a Christian, I'm a disciple of Jesus now, 
I've given my life to Jesus, so I don't do that anymore. I've turned away from all that I know is wrong. And he said, and all of a sudden, we saw our cat with a dead bird in its mouth. And I felt so sorry. I said, oh, that's how a cat, I feed that cat, why is it killing a bird? So I, I, I grabbed it, I grabbed the cat and I took the dead bird out of its mouth. And I had it in my hand like that. And the guy was laughing at the dead bird. I said, and I, but I felt so sorry. I'm going, oh God, I'm sorry our cat's done this. And I felt this warm feeling again coming through me, down my arm like that. And all of a sudden the bird's head went and it flew off like that. I went, whoa, look at that, praise God. I said, that wasn't me. And the guy said, how did you do that? I said, that wasn't me. I said, I accepted Jesus, he came into my life. I was filled with him, his Holy Spirit, and it's Jesus that did that. He, he, he read, and when, when I read it, I read that Jesus raised people from the dead. And I thought, wow, look at that. And then a lady from across the street, uh, two days later, she said she's got cancer in her lungs. And she said, said uh, I said, would you like me to pray for you? Because God's just raised a bird out, uh, from dead out of my hand. And she said, yes. She'd had a, she'd had a scan uh, 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 from the hospital and she was going to have an emergency operation on her lungs for cancer. As I prayed, I felt that feeling again going through me. It was a beautiful feeling of the Holy Spirit. And I said, how do you feel? She started crying. And, and I was crying. And, and the next day she went for the operation. They, they operated, they scanned her again and they said, it's okay, it's gone. You're not having an operation today. It was healed. It was amazing what God was doing. And, uh, and I thought, wow, this is very, very clever. And then I felt I, uh, I had to try and stop smoking. I was filled with the Holy Spirit in the house and, and I was totally cleansed and pure inside. And I said to God, please, help me. And I really tried to stop smoking, but I couldn't. I got down to six a day. And then on Christmas Eve, I gave it to God as a Christmas present. I said, okay, um, I give my kids a Christmas present. I'm giving this to you. I'm not having another cigarette, even though I'm so craving and gagging for one. And I gave it to him, and off he went. And then the next day, I was given 40 cigarettes as a Christmas yeah. present. <laughs> I threw them, I gave them away. And then on Boxing Day, uh, I was craving for a cigarette. And I went, oh, what am I going to do? And then on the Boxing Day night, I didn't have one, but I was so gagging, I couldn't sleep. It was a, it's a horrible feeling when you're addicted to something. <coughs> and then, all of a sudden, I felt. God's hand touched me and it was like a tree being pulled out of me and the roots went out and I never craved another cigarette ever again. Mm. It was like he pulled the craving out of my body. Mm. I thought, wow, this is wonderful. Mm. Look at the wonderful things that God can do. Amen. He was healing me. He can heal anybody. Right. And, and, and I thought, wow, this is very powerful. Mm. I was feeling so much better. And, and I repented from a lot of things. And then one morning, I was remembering all of the things that happened to me as a child, how abused I was, because I used to still often lose my temper. Mm. If anyone said anything, I very quickly lost my temper. Mm. And then all of a sudden, I woke up with a reliving a, a, a time when a gang were beating me up so bad. And I just wanted to beat every. I, I grew up wanting to beat them all. But as I was walking away, I saw Jesus next to me in the dream. And then the, the man, the leader of the gang, came up to me in the dream and said, I'm sorry. He was crying. And for the first time, I said, I forgive you. And I woke up and I thought, wow, look at that. I've been able to forgive him. <laughs> And I felt so much more free inside me, being able to forgive those who hurt me. And, um, and then after that, 
I realised I was not actually being <coughs> sinful as I used to be. I was forgiven for all I'd done. Mm. But the hardest person to forgive was me. Mm. I was able to forgive everyone else, mm. but I struggled to forgive myself. Mm. And so I was often beating myself up for all the things I'd done. And then God said, if you don't forgive yourself, I'm not forgiving you. Mm. And so I definitely forgive myself. Mm. I had to be forgiven. God, if God's forgiven us, let's forgive ourselves. Yeah. Let's move on. Let, let's be better than what we are. Mm. And, uh, and so I carried on like this. And then God started showing me dreams and visions and speaking to me and started calling me. Mm. And one of the wonderful callings I had mm. when I started reading the Bible was this. Mm. Oh, put me glasses. Mm. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be darkened, it will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. When I saw this, I, I was praying that God help me to speak in tongues. And I was walking down the road. And all of a sudden, I was singing a song, and I started singing in tongues. Mm. And uh, I thought, wow, look at that, that's great. And all of a sudden, I heard a voice, Malcolm, you just swore at God. Whoa, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I ran home, and then I, then I read the scripture, and it showed me that when God gives a gift, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. So I then realized this was the devil trying to stop me from speaking in tongues mm. because I had a wonderful gift from God mm. and it seemed to make us so much more stronger. Mm. I started having dreams and visions and I've had many of them which I can't go on about now, they will be for hours. <laughs> but one of the wonderful things was he called me to lead worship. I said, what me? I can't, I can't read music. I only knew about three chords. And, um, and then I, I, I just, um, I said, I won't, I won't say anything to anybody. But it was more and more people coming to me, asking me. And, uh, and in the end, I ended up doing it. Mm. And it was quite amazing how God <coughs> used other people mm. to give me that word, mm. to confirm what it was calling me to do. It was really nice. Mm. And it was, uh, it was really good. And so, um, I've been a worship leader now since 1992, and um, I still can't read music, but God seems to have anointed me to do certain things. And I'd like to sing this song with you, but I want to encourage you that these words are all about what we're going to say to God, and He's going to honour every word like He did with me. And in the second verse, oh let me feel you near me, the world is ever near. I see some things that dazzle and very tempting here. My enemies are near me, around me, tempting me in. Oh Jesus, please be near me and shield my soul from sin. Even, even though I sang that as a kid, God's showing me now that he honoured every one of these words. So please be encouraged, when we're worshipping God, we are speaking words to him, and he's going to honour every word that we are singing to him. Uh, it, it's very powerful. And Lord, if, when we sing this, oh let me hear you speaking, in accents clear and still. <coughs> if you don't want to hear him, please don't sing it, because you will hear him. He will speak to you. <coughs> Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Or speak to reassure me, to haste and uncontrolled. 
or speak and make me listen, O guardian of my soul. So when we're singing this, I often feel people and the sense of God, the presence of God, is very strong. And I, I often encourage people to, be, to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit as we're worshipping God. You've got the freedom to just worship God, uh, to join in. And the, the final verse was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus, you have promised to all who follow you. Where you are in glory, your servants be there too. And Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my Saviour and my friend. Now, when God put this on my heart again, I modernised it a bit because a lot of people couldn't understand the these and thous. So I just modernised it a little bit. But please feel free to say these and thous if you like. Okay? It, this, it's not restrictive. This is just an open and free time for you to worship God and speak what you feel is right for you with Him. And I added a, a, a chorus to it and, and I've added some bridges and the final bridge was I am adopted into your family. You are my brother. I am adopted into your family living now forever. I am adopted into your family and your father is my dad. I am adopted into your family and I am so glad. And at the end there, because we're so glad, we can celebrate. And I've put some la la la's on there. So if you can't sing in tongues, it doesn't matter. You can still go la 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 and just celebrate the wonderful things that God has done through us. And for God to do this to me, even though I've been so bad as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, uh, a criminal, I should have been in jail, and I should have been dead. But God wants us all to live. Amen. So be encouraged. Let's worship him now and thank him for everything he's done. Take these words in. Take his Lord and use us to your praise and glory. Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Be forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the I see some things that 
just thank you Lord for the wonderful healings and powers and miracles that you do through each and every one of us and I thank you Lord that even though I've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's I thank you for helping me speak and being able to remember certain things that I couldn't remember before so we just give you all the wonderful honor and glory in everything you're doing Thank you for bringing the best out of each and every one of us. I do pray, Father, now that you will heal us, cleanse us and prepare us for all that you want to do to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you so much. Bless you, my brother. Thank you, Malcolm, for sharing that powerful testimony and for sharing your gifts with us.